want you to understand that this man that we have him here today is deeply loaded. He is actually an authority in his field. Irene Gitonga, please mute yourself. Mute, please mute yourself. And we are going to be so blessed by his ministry. Let me just read a, a few profiles. Um, Kwame A. A. Opoku is a global speaker. He is also an innovation consultant, SDGs advocate. He's also a business coach, and uh, he's the lead for Reset Global People, We Festival Africa, Africa Women CEO Summit. I mean, he's a regular speaker on those platforms. And recently, he, he did a conference, he convened a conference that saw so many people from all walks of life joining. Um, he has been such an amazing speaker. I have been personally listening. I've been listening to him for so many times every time I get the opportunity. And he's my father's talk. That means that we come from the same household. And he's deeply, 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 deeply anointed at what he does. People, I want you. Of course, I just saw my wife on the call, Lady Georgina Ando Owusu. Uh, my Agathos Anthropos, I see you already. <laughs> this your smile can make the world go right. This your smile could have stopped uh, the, the, the explosion at uh, Lebanon, but you didn't smile early enough. <laughs> anyway, so if you're excited as I am, let's give a warm welcome to our keynote speaker. I don't know whether to call him a world apostle, a world prophet, but whatever it is that God has called him to, we receive his ministry. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Um, I hope that you're able to hear me loud and clear. Yes, sir. Awesome. So, um, first I want to say, if you can hear me, say an I in the chat so that I know you're with me. Uh, we're going to be doing this together. It's going to be extremely interactive um, and it's going to be extremely explorative as well so we're going to be doing this together make sure your fingers are very close to your chat because i'm going to be asking questions i'm seeing different people say i i i i so i know that you can hear me and you're with me um prophet dominic i am so so elated you have no idea um what this means to me uh i think that and i told you this when we're having our conversation when when we did the last sonship conference and you came to preach opulent you know, daddy has different sons, but there was something about you that I could connect with greatly. And, and I remember saying to myself that one day I will be on this man's platform. Um, and then I just left it to God. I mean, I was waiting for post-corona, you know, and then maybe one day get the, the luck of being invited. So this is an extreme privilege to me. Um, the work you're doing, the grace that you carry, and just the... Uh, the anointing that draws the gold for me that's that's my favorite part because mm. uh, gold mm. is a default setting of the kingdom our father who is right. in walks on the street of gold um, i'm that's not one right. of christians and people who believe in god who believe in glorifying poverty suffering is not necessary for heaven you know so mm. i don't want to get into those things but there are a few people who believe me and i believe strongly um in the anointing on your life and so i'm very privileged um, Lady Dr. Georgina, I salute you. Um, I am coming from home, so we are home. We can't bring greetings from home because we come from the same father. So, but greetings from uh, the old man. Um, I spoke to him about this, and he said, uh, when I asked that the prophet, that can I be there um, for Prophet Dominic? That he said a thousand times yes. I'll screenshot oh. it and send it to you. Wow! <laughs> Special support from the man who has raised sons like us. And a big mm. thing to everybody, I see people from Kenya because of the name, South Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, wherever you're coming from, thank you so much for joining us. So let's get straight into it. I came heavily loaded. I have only two days with you today and Sunday, and I want us to be able to go through a lot and to be able to go out of this conference breathing and leaving substantial strategies and tools that you 
can use to create wealth. Um, I'm going to say this thing to you. Um, I bring three golden rules to every summit that I speak to, and especially if it's something that's very dear to my heart and I'm extremely passionate about. So these are the three golden rules for the summit. Um, Prophet, with your permission, I want to bring my rules for my sections. Um, thank mm. you very much. So golden rule number one, and if you're hearing me, I want you to write it in the chat so you can remember, please leave your ego at the door. Leave your ego at the door. If you can hear me, I want you to type that in the chat because I know that some of us are, you know, data analysts. Some of us are medical doctors. Some of us are, you know, bosses and CEOs and MDs of our various, you know, businesses. But I need you to understand that we're all here to learn that knowledge is not composite in only one man's mind. And so be humble enough to say that I am opening my heart to learn. And so leave your ego at the door is number one. Um, the second golden rule that I want to um, share with you is be open-minded. Uh, regardless and irrespective of your industry or niche, come with an expectation. This is something that a lot of men of God say, but even in an academic disposition and looking at, you know, taking knowledge that you can apply, it's important that you come expecting to learn. So golden rule number two, be extremely open-minded. Um, do not be trapped by foreknowledge. Do not be trapped by the things you already know. One of the greatest blocks to learning are things that we already think we know. And oftentimes when God is trying to bless you by showing a new path, you become the demon in your own way because your pre-existing knowledge and your pride will not allow you to digest new information so that you can adapt. You need to be like the children of Issachar who understood the times, but not just the understanding of the time, but they also understand what Israel ought to do. I think the mm. problem that we've had as a church is that we're very, very much fuzzy about, we're very much interested in knowing about the times. We're not so much invested in what Israel ought to do. And so the second thing is be open-minded to new information, new knowledge. Some that might challenge your old perspectives and your old established knowledge. That's golden rule number two. Golden rule number three, and I want everybody to hear this, there's no such thing as a wrong or right answer. Only a new thing, a new way to learn and then a new way to unlearn. So never ever, I would, if any questions come, because I told you we're doing this together, if you, just say what is on your mind. We're here to think and create. We're not here to uh, regurgitate what the speaker is saying or, um, you know, show how good we are in memorizing things. So those are the three golden rules. I hope that it helps us go into this conversation. So I'm going to share my screen and start an interesting presentation with you, and then we're going to get deep into it. All right. So I hope that you can see my screen. Prof, if you can see it, please let me know so that I know that everybody else is seeing it as well. Yes, yes, I can. All right, let me make it big so that we can go through this. Now, so for the 40, of the, the 40 of us who are joining on day one, today I want to speak to you about the new world and how to create wealth in it. So today we're going to look at the new world. What does it look like, the characteristics? How can you determine your place in it? How can you take a hold of what is yours in that new world? And then I would do an introduction of how to create wealth in this new world. And then on Sunday, we would drive that conversation all the way home. So I hope you're ready. Now, let me just give, they've just done an introduction. I don't even need to show you this, um, but I've been doing this. If somebody wants to, uh, you know, check out just because of context and understanding the background, I've been doing this for about 11 years, um, started studying technologies. And the interesting thing that happened is in 2016, I had the opportunity to invest into Bitcoin, man of God. Um, and because I had no knowledge of what Bitcoin was, at the time it was 0 0.001. And somebody was offering me um, 100 Bitcoin for 500 CDs. For those of us who don't understand the Ghanaian CDs, 500 CDs is the equivalent of about 90 something, $95-ish, right? So the person said, give me a loan of uh, 500 CDs or $95 and I'll give you 100 Bitcoin. I had no idea what Bitcoin was. I didn't understand the technology. I didn't even know it existed. So I said, no, this looks like a scam. In 2018, um, no, 2016, after I said no to it, Bitcoin started taking off um, a bit. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen what Bitcoin became. At the time that it hit $20,000, if I had 100 Bitcoin, I would have made $2 million from $95. And the reason why I made this great life-turning wealth opportunity was because I did not understand the wealth that was coming. 
And that was what shot me into researching into how can I be able to predict the fringes? How am I able to tell um, what is happening with technology and how it would affect society and business and churches um, and money, money and wealth creation? And I found this thing called futurism. Now, for a lot of you who hear the term future is crummy, you don't know what it is. Futurism is actually an academic discipline, all right? I repeat, if I'm speaking too fast, I'm going to slow down for you. I have so much to download, so I'm heated up, guys. Forgive me. Now, futurism is an academic discipline. And what we study is we study scenario planning, we study trend analysis, and we, we study future forecasting. So these are the three things under futurism. So you can study it under different industries. Some of them studied on the social side. Some studied on the technology side, on the humanity side. So I chose the technology side to understand how much technology was going to change the world. In that period, I have spoken in some 10, 15 countries across the world, um, three different continents that we touch. I've done over, I think the last time I checked, almost 1,200 stages since I started doing this in different places of the world, sharing this message with people to understand that the only way that Africa will get to progress is if we start tapping into technologies that can solve problems, all right? So that's just a bit um, of the work that we do. Um, you can see some of the work that we've done in the past. We do this for companies, churches, um, governmental organizations, world leaders. We do most of the time by God's grace. I'm the youngest person in the room and it is always humbling, but I know the God that has called me and the Father whom I serve. So I know that I'm not built for local. Um, the kind of anointing we carry on the house that you are in is not a local anointing. And I want you to say to yourself, I am too big for my country. Um, say that to yourself in faith and in spirit. Ghana is too small and Kenya is too small. South Africa is too small for the kind of oil that is burning on your head. And so for us, we do not stoop for local, you know, I, 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 I cover 25 million. No, we want to cover 1.2 billion. Um, that, that is the grace that we operate under. It's a global one. If you look at my company, it's called Reset Global People. If you check my last summit, it's called University of Personal Development Global Program. I have wedded myself and my projects and my initiatives according to the grace available in my house. If you are with this man of God, you are too big for your country. So this is some of the work that we do. Um, you can see some as well in different parts of the world. Some are in Zambia, some are in Ghana, some are in South Africa, Rwanda, Nigeria. We've done work in Dubai. And so this is just a bit of what we have done. Now, let's start having the exciting conversations. Um, how many of us like movies? I can't see your chat, but still put it in the chat and let us see. If you like movies and you have seen this movie before, Minority, uh, Minority Report, say I. Now, for those of us who have watched Minority Report, um, you would be able to understand what I'm saying. For those of us who have not watched Minority Report, it might be sad because you will have to go and get Minority Report to watch, all right? Now, if you watch Minority Report, Man of God, this is a movie where the main cast, which is Tom Cruise, um, works in the police department, Man of God. Now, in the police department that he works, he works in a special department. The department is called Three Crime. I repeat, Tom Cruise, who is the star of Minority Report, um, works in a special department of the police in the future. So this movie was released, I think, 2010, and they projected to the future. In the future, he worked in the police department called pre-crime. Man of God, what pre-crime does is that they use technology to determine whether or not you will commit crime in the future, and they arrest you today. That is what the movie was about. Now, a lot of you are saying, fancy, it is a movie, what is going on? Well, let me shock you. Some group of people watched this movie. After watching the movie, they thought it was a good idea. As I speak to you, man of God, they have come up with a computing system that can predict to 89.5% accuracy whether or not somebody has the tendency to actually commit crime in the future. It is no more a movie fallacy. If you see up here, it says three samples of criminal ID photos. And then down here, these samples are people who are most likely not going to commit crime. And every time that they've used the machine, it has predicted accurately to almost 90% certainty. 
And I want you to start thinking, if you think that technology is just Instagram and Facebook and Google, you have no idea how much is happening behind the scenes that you're not realizing and how much is actually going to affect your life. So a good example for you to breathe over and understand this. Now, a lot of us, I'm sure, have seen this headline before. The robots are coming for our jobs. Technology is taking over things. If you've heard some of these things before, the two things that you need to understand or the two biggest questions that we need to ask is, why is this happening? And why is it happening now? So the why and the why now is what I want to introduce you to. I want to introduce you to a, a concept of study called exponential growth of technologies and tools. Um, now, a lot of us who are thinking about the robots are coming and technology is coming, and a lot of the time we're wondering, you know, where did this come from? I brought you some headlines for you to look at. At the top, it says that automation in Britain stares on rest in labor. The people who are in London there were crying the robot revolution, depriving them of jobs. This is in Britain, guys. The down there, it says that Mr. Robot often outshines his master, right? So they are talking about robots. Here it's talking about frames and um, the ability of robots to do some jobs. Now, let me help you guys. The robots didn't start coming for our jobs in 2020. The Britain story I showed you was in 1933. Mr. Robot, our shining his master, was in 1951, guys. The point I'm trying to make to you is that technology has always been around. And every time it showed its head, with a new solution to the market, it took away jobs, it shifted industries, it changed the way things work, and it completely destroyed every existing system that we had, and then brings a new rule of engagement for us to work with, right? So let me take a deep, a deep breath and help you guys here. When you think technology, do not think computers, do not think software, do not think hardware. Guys, Technology is anything that makes work faster, easier, and cheaper. I repeat, technology is anything that makes work faster, easier, and cheaper. So if your girlfriend makes your work faster, cheaper, <laughs> and easier, your girlfriend is your technology. Glory be to God. Let me know. Some of you, if your girlfriend is a technology, you need to delete them. Let me focus. Now, the thing that I need you to understand is that technology goes beyond the software and the hardware. Let me give you a good example of technology. The day we discovered fire, fire was a mind-blowing technology. From fire, when they discovered the steam engine and invented it, it was a mind-boggling technology. Radio was a crazy technology. Television, they had never imagined the possibility of broadcasting human images across a certain um, spectrum of, of coverage in terms of, you know, reach. They never dreamed of any of those things. And so all of these things are technology. In our world today, we think technology is, you know, um, your computer and your phone. The car is a technology. The tractor is a technology. The bicycle is a form of technology. Anything that makes work faster, easier, and cheaper is technology. So let's proceed. Now, for those of you who are worried about losing your jobs, uh, there's another guy who's also very worried about losing his job. So I'm going to play you a quick video just to give you some hope and make sure that you know that you are not alone and some people are with you. So watch this video, guys. So in the, in, the, in the kitchen, we know that the stealing of the fish is this guy's job. Have you seen a shock in his eyes? There is a new thief in the house, and it is not a normal cat. So the cat is also very worried about losing his job, just like you are worried about losing your job. So you're in good company. Please don't shiver. God is with you. Now, the problem is that people have no idea how fast things are moving. People are not paying attention to the fringes. We are also consumed in the rat race in trying to get what needs to be gotten and you know um, solve problems and relationships. So we're not paying attention to the fringes. And that's the reason why I bless the man of God so much 
for bringing this kind of knowledge to the church. I've spoken in every kind of establishment, schools and companies and conferences and trainings, but normally churches do not bring this message in-house to equip the children of God who have the kingdom mandate to be able to use these technologies. If you look at the life of Jesus Christ, I can show you how he used technological strategies to amplify his words, okay? Let me give you a great example before I even digress. Jesus Christ understood that in order for him to reach the world, he was not going to be able to do it organically, right there somewhere. Jesus understood that he will not be able to grow organically. So those of you on social media, those of you with businesses, and instead of you to invest in your marketing so you can grow exponentially, you're trying to work organically and taking the slow route. Jesus Christ didn't do that. Can I prove it to you? If you look at the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ very well, you will realize that the man was always using influencers. Ah, I, 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 listen, so the kinds of people that Jesus Christ chose, if you look, he chose the centurion. The centurion was like the chief justice. That's where he went to do his miracle. He, he looked at for hash puppy. You know, when he got there and he got a short guy on the, on the tree, that was hash puppy. It was in her puppy's house. Jesus was congregating. Jesus went to the well and she met the woman who was so popular, five husbands. She has lost all of them, chasing a lot of men. The Bible said before Jesus entered the city, the influencer had gone and said, come and see a man. Jesus was always using influencers. So technological strategies are things that we can actually trace back to the Bible. And it is not something that we should shy away from as a people, all right? Now, Let's dig deeper. I, I came prepared, guys. <laughs> uh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. <laughs> Prophet, I told you. Jesus was always using influencers. Now, we live in joint in the amazing that we've ever, ever had as humanity. We're living in an amazing time. Anything and everything is possible. However, I want to introduce you to a very simple, uh, simple concept, guys. For some of us, what technology is doing is going to create an upward climb, like you can see for Netflix, and that is disruptive opportunities. For those of us who want to remain in our ways and we do not want to change in any way, we're going to go through what Blockbuster is going through. Now, let me explain. But before I do that, I want to give you two rules that you need to write down. Listen to me, guys. Technology does not need your permission to progress. <laughs> I repeat, technology does not need your permission to progress. Man of God, about a year or so ago, the government announced that people should stop using the TV with the big back, the Chikopo TV, and start yeah. getting digital TVs. Man of God, if you decide that you, you are yourself, you, you are a big man or woman, so you will not change the TV. Right now that all the stations are moving to digital, please, what will show up on your screen? So the technology does not need your permission. You can decide that you will ignore it. So some of you will hear some of the technologies and the opportunities, and it will sound like it's for the young ones, it's for the Facebook babies. That is fine. But once the technology progresses, and there's a technology that can do your job, and you are asked to go home, do not cry that God didn't give you the opportunity to grab the information. Cry that you were stubborn in your own ways and you decided not to shift. Blockbuster is one of the stubborn ones. So Blockbuster, for those of us who remember the days of DVD and VHS and VCD, we used to go and watch movies and then we come and watch and we take them back. How many of us remember those days? Now, the biggest company in the world was Blockbuster. They used to have chain stores in over 182 countries where they were renting movies, guys. For two different times, Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy Netflix. And guess what? They did not buy. This is the CEO of Blockbuster, Jim Case, in, in 2008. Read what he said. He said, neither Redbox nor Netflix are even on the radar screen in terms of competition. This that we know it, that, that this is how it has always worked for us. This is what it produces. Today, let me take you back to where we were. Let me take you back. Today, Blockbuster went bankrupt in 2010. Netflix 
is now over $240 billion in evaluation. During the corona season, their stock grew by 380%, guys. Remember the three rules that I brought to you. If you do not open your mind and pay attention to the market, you're going to get into trouble. Let us have an interesting conversation, guys, and let me bring you some heat in your heart. If you look on the left, you can see this guy. He has here a camera, a video camera. He has a stereo. He has a Walkman on his desk. He has an earphone, the big ones. He has the smaller ones. He has a Discman. He has a typewriter. You can see a VHS. You can see calculators. You can see um, a system unit, a video game, a recorder. Guys, every single one of these things is now inside this pocket 20 years later. This mm. is for every single one that would disappear, somebody has lost their job. Can I ask you a question, guys? Where is Panasonic? Where is Sagem? Where is Nintendo? Where is Nokia? Where is Blackberry? Where is Panasonic? Where are the companies we grew up seeing? Where did they disappear to? When was the last time you sat home to watch TV for more than two hours if it wasn't for religious purposes? When was the last time you yourself made a, another person detect to you which content you will have. Today, we all sit down, and if we feel like doing Bollywood movies, we go to YouTube and watch it as we want. Or if we feel like subscribing and getting monthly content, the ones that we want, we go to Netflix. Now, every single one. So this is the question I want you to start thinking about, guys. I'm going to give you another strong statement. Every little time you see a productivity app, on your ios or google play store know that somebody is out of work let me explain if you get an app that gives you recipes for making food would you need a food expert to come and help you with recipes the answer is no if you develop or get an app that shows you how many push-ups you should do and how many triceps and biceps or all of these fitness stuff man of god do you need a fitness coach anymore the answer is no. The question I'm asking you is, who is developing the productivity app that will take your job? Think about that. Now, let's get into this. So where does this lead us? Now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we're going to have a face-to-face -face talk. Good, I am back. Now, are you ready, guys? This was just introduction. Now let me also sip some tea. <laughs> this was introduction, guys. This was introduction. Now, where does this lead us? What I've done in this introduction is to say to you, things are not the way they used to be. All our relationships are digital. Some of us, we met our date on social media. Some of our best friends, we met them on Instagram. Some of the people we call wifey and bestie, we met them on Facebook. Um, we have never sent a real flower to the girl or to the guy. We have sent them emoji flower with a big smiley face. Our entire relationships have been digitized. Our transactions have been digitized. If you're here, I can bet you that in the last one month, you made some form of internet payment using credit cards or mobile money. Our transactions and our wealth has been digitized. Our communication has been digitized. I am sitting in Ghana, Prophet is in Ghana, some of you are in Kenya. We are omnipresent as I speak to you. We have the ability to be present in different locations at the same time through an interface powered by technology. Our communication has been digitized. Our um, uh, uh, movements and societies, parenting, has become digital. Before the parents can teach the kid ABC, he's, she's already playing video games and watching cartoons on YouTube and knows words and shortcuts that the parent has never heard before. Sex is beginning to change. We are beginning to see the evolution of sex robots and people are beginning to go for that option. We're beginning to see with technologies like CRISPR-Cas9, how people are now able to edit embryos and to be able to enhance certain genes in children. Our birthing has been digitized. Our entire life is now a new digital reality. And this is something that I want you to not take for granted because it is not going to go away, it is going to stay. Now, how did we get here? 
I want to introduce you to Gordon Moore's law. So for some of you who are extremely techy, I'm sure you know of Gordon Moore. Gordon Moore was the co-founder of Intel. So the guys that started building Pentium 1, Pentium 2. Now, when they started building the Pentium, Gordon Moore did a study for seven years from 1968 to 1975. And he realized that the technologies that they were building in terms of the transistor capacity, the technologies were increasing in performance every 12 to 18 to 24 months. For a year to every two years, the technology would increase in performance. And then he also realized that whenever the technology increased in performance, the price point that you needed to create the technology decreased. So he looked at the trend for seven years and came up with Gordon Moore's law, which basically states that in every 12 to 24 months, we are going to increase the technological performance power and we're going to decrease the price point. So what are the examples? Pentium 2 was better than Pentium 1. Pentium 3 was better than Pentium 2. Pentium 4 was better than Pentium 3. Today, if you tell anybody you use Pentium 4, they might slap you because you are from uh, 1882. Who is doing Pentium, right? And that is Gordon Moore's law. So if you think that what we are seeing today is crazy, give me 12 to 24 months, your brain will blow away. In about uh, 2018, I put a tweet up um, on Twitter, and it was of a young man called Yuval Noah. Yuval Noah is an award-winning world author who, reads, uh, who writes about humanity and our evolution. Um, and so I read and I follow him a lot. He was booked to speak at a TEDx conference. He was booked to speak at a TEDx conference in Israel. But the guy lives in California, right? So I saw this technology, and he had posted that today, which was in 2018, they use what we call 4D, 4K holographic projector. So it is 4D and it is 4K holographic projector. And he was standing in his room with one of the projectors in California, and he appeared on stage at the TEDx event in Tel Aviv, Israel, at the same time. The Indian Prime Minister, you can go and Google him and let that be the record for you to do your fact checking. The, the Indian Prime Minister used this technology in the year 2016, and he was doing um, rallies, and he was appearing on stage at about 10 different locations at the same time but he was only at one. And people started trooping in and he broke the internet and they said he was omnipresent. And because of that, he won by a whooping 84% landslide win because of how he used technology and drove community conversation. So if you think that Zoom is crazy, wait till the next meeting we have, you see my avatar and Prophet's avatar sitting in your room, high-fiving you. There's something called haptic technology, H-A-P, TIC technology. It is now going to allow us to be able to touch via the internet. So the next time the man of God prays for you and you have your haptic glove and he has his haptic glove, when he stretches his hand, you will feel his touch. I'm not, guys, go and check the technologies out, but, but let's reverse, let's reverse, let's reverse. Let's all breathe. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> so Gordon Moore's law has been telling us that every 12 to 24 months, technology will double and triple in performance, and then it would also decrease in price. So today, if you want to buy a Pentium 4 computer, I am sure you get it for 200 Ghana. The same amount of money that you used to buy a certain thing two years ago, because the technology has increased in performance and the price has dropped, you realize that that same amount can get you a way better, improved version of that same device, all right? now. This is where we're going to practicality. The question is, how does this concern me? How does this concern you and I? How does this concern the church? How does this concern your business? So do this for me, guys. The technology is called haptic technology. A-P-E-T-I-C. I'll type it for you. I'm also very hands-on. So there you have it, Susan haptic technology. It allows touch over the internet. You can check it out. If you go and you Google it, whatever you find, come and post it in the chat so other people will see. Now, how does this concern me? 
This is the first thing I want to introduce to you guys. Number one, understand that whenever technology increases in performance and decreases in size, the first thing that happens is that it births new industries. I hope you caught that. Whenever, I'm going to say it again, whenever technology increases in performance and decreases in price, the first thing it does is that it creates new industries. Do you want an example? Man of God, before, if you did a big crusade in stadium and you had filled the stadium up and you asked me, Kwame, use your media agency and cover this for me. I want you to capture an aerial shot so that I can see the whole stadium, man of God. I'll have to go and pay for a helicopter. I'll have to pay for a helicopter pilot. And then I will now have to pay for a camera guy who's not scared of heights. And they will jump in the helicopter and they will fly over the stadium and he will film it and brought it. When the filming technology got cheaper and more powerful, and the aviation technology got cheaper and powerful. Somebody figured the two of them together and created a new industry out of it called the drone industry. Today, the guy that used to fly the airplane, the guy that used to sit and hold the camera, and the man that owned the helicopter have all lost value or lost jobs. So, Pay attention to the new industry, guys. Ten years ago, people could not make money as social media managers. There was no social media, so to speak. Ten years ago, people could not make money as YouTube bloggers. There was no such thing. There were no drone pilots. We didn't have virtual assistants. We did not have um, uh, uh, Uber drivers. So there are, as we speak, about 2,000 new jobs that technology is creating that we do not have a single academic institution preparing people for those industries. If you're here and you read business and you did marketing in a big university, or if you even done master's degree in marketing, I want to ask you, when you did your marketing in your master's degree, did they teach you about immersive marketing? Did they teach you TikTok marketing? Did they teach you Snapchat marketing? No, they taught you the four P's of marketing, price, promotion, place. We live in a digital world where place has been totally decimated. So you are holding a master's degree in non-essential information that is not applicable to the real world or cannot change your life. You are holding just an A4 sheet. And I do not disrespect- Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's breathe in. <laughs> wow, amazing, man. Amazing, amazing, amazing. <laughs> How do I say? We, I just needed a puff of air. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I do not in any way disrespect anybody's degree. And so please forgive me if you're offended. But I am telling you that, that the CV is dead. People are not getting jobs according to their CVs anymore. People are not getting jobs according to their portfolio and according to recommendations. So uh, do not in any way uh, be upset by the truth that I'm handing to you today because this is a healing service for everybody. Anything that has been restricting us from benefiting from the new world. Let me say something powerful. Guys, technology is not a demon and technology is not the antichrist. Don't let the devil fool us. Don't let anybody tell you that the technology is the one that's going to be the RFID and they are going to use it as 666. That is nonsense propaganda so that Christians will leave technology for the world to manipulate the systems and the economic framework of this world. And we are not going to stand by and allow that to happen. So please understand that technology is not the antichrist and technology will not bring the 666. Please embrace it and use it so that we can amplify the gospel. All the men of God who used to come up with revelations and say that Facebook is antichrist and this is 666, when they shut the whole world down, they now went. I think Facebook had given its life to Christ and had surrounded to his, the, the Lordship and Savior <laughs> of that. Now they are all on Facebook. They are <laughs> all of a sudden, Facebook is no more a demon, guys. So please embrace it and let us, let us really 
have this conversation. Now, where do I take it from now? So how does it concern me? Understand that new industries are being created. Number two, guys, I want you to hear me. I want to come close to my screen and say this to you. The value is shifting from where it used to be and is going somewhere else. Let me make it practical. How many of us remember Kodak? Kodak was a camera company. Man of God, they used to make the camera. They used to make the film for the camera. And then they used to make the chemical that we used to process the images. It was a $28.2 billion industry. It was like the apple of the day. Man of God. When digital cameras arrived, the people said, forget this toy. Do you know the funny part? Eric Sasson was the head of innovation at Kodak. He's the person who invented the first digital camera. When he sent it to Kodak, Kodak said this is a toy project and it will never work. At the time, it was taking 0 0.0001 megapixel. The picture would take about 12 seconds before it goes kept for you to be able to stop your pose. And they say this is a toy thing. The same thing that was manufactured in their labs is the same thing that slashed a $28 billion giant and they declared bankruptcy in 2012 from 140,000 employees to 17,000 employees, over 130,000 people lost their jobs because of one mistake. One technology shifted the value. Right now, the value was not in the film printing, it was not in the film, and was not in the chemical. The value was in the storage of your pictures on the digital camera, and Kodak missed that. And so when the micro SD people and the guys who are interested in memory um, uh, uh, space and how you can store your things caught a wind of the digital camera. They are the ones who then became the new giants and the new billionaires in the picture industry. And the big Goliath, which was Kodak, had to fall. Understand that when technologies introduce themselves, the value shifts from where it used to be. So can I give you another example? Man of God, if you wanted to do this broadcast about 15 years ago, you might have needed an OB van. You might have needed a full TV crew with people who are holding cameras and uh, TV satellite dishes and trying to broadcast you into the rooms of people. Today, what do you need? This is just your laptop. You have connected internet. You have your headphones on. You are omnipresent. The money has now moved. The person who is now making the money is Zoom. Can you imagine? It is now Zoom. That took you a small micro amount per month so that you can have this session to go beyond 40 minutes. So the value has shifted. When Corona came and we couldn't move, look at the guys that used to make money from events. They will build big stage and then they will build, you know, uh, 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 lights and, and big speakers. Ha, right now, who, who is meeting for you to build them? When we had big conventions and crusades, that's where the money was. But because a certain thing triggered itself and some technologies are available. So if I was in the event industry and I was buying stages and lights, Corona has given you a prophetic word for your future, that there is a world coming. And people have now, unfortunately for you, tasted the sweetness of being able to sit in your home and do this. Now, when Corona goes, granted, we miss it. We will congregate and we will meet again. But now, Prophet Dominic will not limit his meetings to only the people in the room in Kumasi. He can bring his worldwide audience. With the technology I spoke about with Yuval, he can now even be present on their stages and on their pulpits everywhere in the world. So you realize that the value will now start shifting to the technology that he's using. The 4K holographic projector is where the money will go to. And you will see that money and value begins to move from where we used to think it was into a very, very different place. Now, let me give you another good example. How many of us remember the desktop? The one that used to have the system unit a big one sitting with a keyboard. One day somebody woke up and said, why have we separated all these things? Put the system unit and the monitor and everything together. But there's a company in China that produces only the system units. They're gone. Even those who are within technology itself are not safe. Number three, how does this concern me? And this is why I'm here today. For the first time in the history of the world, you have the opportunity to create wealth in the most easy, most global, and most efficient way ever. Before this period in humanity, you needed, you needed qualifications, 
You need that CVs and degrees. You need that connections. You need that networks. Today, people who are carrying coffins can go viral with no marketing budget. Can I repeat that, man of God? The guys that are now a global sensation that they have a billboard in China and they have never entered plane to Asia. They had no marketing budget and the entire world heard of them. Never in the history of the world has that been possible. Never in the history of the world can a blasting happen in Beirut and two seconds after the blasting, the whole world has heard of it. Never in the history of the world. So the third reason why I want you to fully embrace this next two days, and I already have about just 15 minutes or so for the rest of my section today, is that you have the once in a lifetime opportunity of creating wealth for yourself. Before I start this, that's this next, next session, if you're hearing me loud and clear, I want you to tell me what you do, what work you do, or what your position is, or which, what is your business. I know for the man of God, and I know for mommy as well. But everybody else on the call, let me know what you do, and I'll be able to bring it in in the conversation so that it benefits you, all right? Now, Catherine already does IT. There's a web developer. So guys, what I'm speaking about, you know of it, right? Catherine and, and Lorna, are these things that I'm saying strange, or are they truth? Because you and I are in the same industry. So we need to be able to tell them the truth, all right? Now, can we proceed? Okay, Catherine says they are, uh, they are true. Tando is also a software developer. Um, so I, I think she will answer the question. I'm seeing logistics and supply chain, governance and youth development. Uh, Stella, you and I do something alike. Pharmaceutical, there's an IT trainer here. There's HR. I'm, I love this crowd. <laughs> we have every type of person in here. Graduate with a passion for real estate. Perfect. There's a writer. There's a chef and a caterer. This is beautiful. There's a preacher here. <laughs> there's a social man of God. Did you handpick them? <laughs> every industry is present. And so this will be very interesting. Now, let's do 30 minutes of me introducing you to wealth creation. I call it pajamas millionaires. Now, the reason why I call it pajamas millionaires is because you now have the ability to sit in the comfort of your home within your PJs and with access to a phone or a laptop and internet connection, you can create wealth through over a hundred different ways. I'm going to share with you seven in the next two days, guys. And I'm going to share with you seven that I have used to make money with proof, with strategies, with step-by-step -step guide, and with the man of God's anointing backing you to launch out, all right? Now, Pyjamas Millionaires is something that I started about uh, in March when the first lockdown came. And I started doing free trainings for people on how they could make money online because I had been doing this for a while. And some of the results and some of the monies that I had made, I felt like in a season where people's businesses were being closed and they couldn't go out and they couldn't sell and children were out of school and drivers had been asked to pack. It was only humane for me to share some of the things that I used to give out for free so people can also make money. Otherwise, if you are the only one with light in the neighborhood, you are the one that the thieves will steal from. So I didn't want to be the one who's a harbinger of knowledge and everybody is stressed, everybody, because if they are stressed, then they are not going to buy from me. So by giving them the knowledge to equip them to make the money, they can now come back and buy from me, all right? So let me introduce you to step number one on how you can create wealth. Please leave your ego at the door. There's even a criminologist here who can check you out and receive you a fraud or, you know, that's my friend. What's the name? You are my friend. I need to find it. She. S-H-I-I, -I. I, I like people who study criminals, right? I mean, I'm obsessed with criminals. I watch Raymond Reddington like a, like a Bible study. So if you watch Blacklist, hey, you are my friend. Now, I'm going to show you seven proven, not the stuff that they're saying on the internet, not the gurus who are sitting in Lamborghinis and telling you that buy my course and in three days you make $1 million. Ah, oh God, wow, how can you believe in things like this now? You're a Christian now. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. How? That is not how it works. 
even Moses who could put his hand here and bring out, you can't do that magic. So not any of those who blah on the internet. This is one of your own. This is someone who has built it from scratch, all right? Now, the first thing I'm going to introduce you to on how to make money using online platforms, and I'm not sure any of you are expecting this, is called public speaking. <laughs> ah, okay, we'll get into it, we'll get into it. Now, public speaking is one of the major ways of making money online. Now, let's even make it broader and bigger and call it communication skills. Communication skills. Now, there are different layers that you can use to make money from this industry online. Now, before we look at public speaking as a, as a wealth creator, let's look at what you need, the basic tools and accessories you will need in order for you to be able <laughs> uh, Stella says it's a lie, three days for her. So we are not doing any of those internet stuff. This one, you're going to have to work. You're going to have to commit to consistent work, okay? So let's go through the things you need in order to set your online business or platform up, okay? Number one, and this is the mistake a lot of you make. The first thing you need is an internal strategy for your online wealth creation program. So you need to create an internal strategy for your online wealth creation program, okay? So I have decided that I want to go make money online. I need an internal strategy. Guys, you don't go and open an Instagram account and a Facebook account before you get your strategy. This is where the problem is. Because, man of God, if you are a prophet, and you're going to go online and position your ministry to reach more people and bring in more seed for the work of God, the target audience is different. If the target audience is different, the platforms you go on will be different from me if I'm coming to sell football boots and fitness things, okay? So each and every one of us need to first decide what are we taking to digital platforms? What value? Are we taking to digital platforms and in which industry does the value hold, right? So you're, if you need to develop an internal strategy, the first thing is what is my message? What is the value? For me, I use digital technologies to empower young people to create wealth and solve societal problems. That's the value I'm bringing to the market. And I do that through various expressions. One of them is summits like this. I do live trainings. I do courses. I do live conferences. I do mentorships. I do masterminds. But all of those things are platforms for expression. But the real, the real hardcore product and value I am bringing to the market is the one that I stated before. And that is empowering young people. So I have also defined my demographic. So in your strategy, you must know your what, you must know your who, which will then determine your where. Some of you are suffering on Instagram because the content and the value you have is for LinkedIn and YouTube, but you are busy follow following everybody. May God disappear from us, the spirit of follow follow. What works for D does not work for A. Sit down and get your own internal strategy. The Bible said there is a man that goes to war, but before he goes to war, the Bible said he will sit down and count. So you need to count. It's called strategy. One of the people who had hard strategies that the world has ever seen was a guy called Ahitophel. The, the Bible said he was so strategic, he could win wars with a single strategy. And so please, Strategy is not something that we are inventing as a buzzword from the world. Strategy exists in the Bible. So your internal strategy is, who, what am I selling? Who am I selling it to? And where am I selling it? The what is whatever it is you know. So let me go through it and help everybody. Now, let's start from here. So my real estate agent, can take the information on real estate and go and sell. My logistics and supply chain person can be a logistics and supply chain expert on digital platforms. The pharmaceutical person, such an amazing opportunity for you. 
there are so many issues with the pharmaceutical business. Um, overdose, uh, self-prescriptions. Imagine if you're one of the most notable pharmaceutical influencers on Instagram, you have built your brand, you have 100,000 followers because you're giving tips on medicinal best practices, how not to abuse drugs, um, you know, generic things like, you know, skin treatment, uh, natural, um, you know, treatments for different diseases. Imagine if you're that person. All of a sudden, your value is not only limited to the four, you know, square building you're standing in, in the brick and mortar. Whenever you come online, you have access to 100,000 people from all over the world who are willing to pay and exchange for value. But a typical pharmaceutical person is thinking of, how do I get my next job and sit in front of the next pharmacy or work in the next clinical hospital? Human resource who's teaching us how to onboard our human resource processes in this digital era. Human resource people are missing. In Africa, give me one strong HR influencer that comes to mind that you can call their name and say, yo, there's this lady on Instagram. She's just, you know, when it comes to HR, she's giving tips. She has, she's, she's giving you help on how to get hired and ETC, ETC. Nobody. If you're a writer, it's, it's crazy now. The places the money is. Um, on Fiverr, you can make money there. On Patreon, you can write and create. As a virtual assistant, you can make a lot of money as a writer. Put out your own ebook. Put out your own animated series as a writer. The opportunities are crazy. For the chef and the caterer, in a world that everybody wants to eat healthy, everybody wants to be satisfied, but they don't want to go fat. You guys are in absolute demand. Recipes, eating so that you don't gain weight. You write your first ebook, 10 recipes that can make you lose weight in nine months. Like, guys, the money is with you, but you are only already focused on your kitchen and on your restaurant. And when people don't show up in Corona, you go back to prayer and you said, oh God, oh God. When God has said, my daughter, look at Instagram, create an online restaurant. And whilst you are at it, start giving them free tips so that you can be their go-to person. But you are praying for a miracle for Corona to go so people can give you and come to your restaurant. When God is trying to give you national you know, claim and national access to numbers that you will not be able to handle. Um, freelance writer and nutritionist, um, somebody who is in ministry and business, we know the men of God and what they're doing online. You know of uh, Stephen Furtick, TDJs, how they're using these online platforms to amplify their message, guys. So the thing that I wanted you to note is that regardless and irrespective of your industry, you need to know the what, you need to know the where, and you need to know the who, your target audience, the digital platforms, and the platforms can be, number one, your personal website. Say after me, do not build on rented land. If you're here with me and you're doing a business, you are running a brand, and you do not have a website, you are building on rented land. Instagram is Mark Zuckerberg's land. Facebook is Mark Zuckerberg's land. Uh, Twitter is for uh, uh, Jack. Uh, uh, that's his land. If you go on TikTok, it's for the Asians, it's, it's their land. If you go on Zoom, it's for the Americans. If you go on Skype, it's for the two guys who started it. Do not build on rented land. Build on your own land. Get a website from, as I speak to you, you can build your own website from places such as waste.com, squarespace.com. You can even go into WordPress and use interfaces such as Elementor. These platforms can allow you to build your own land, build your own website, get your own email list, find a way to squeeze out people's emails and people's numbers and have your own land. Then use platforms such as Facebook and Instagram where there are already people living in mass areas. Use that one to carry them to your own land. You are a landlord. You have come to claim. This is kingdom um, authority in the digital space. Um, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, has already taken the left side of the road. Apple has taken the right side of the road. Me, future is coming. I'm also taking that corner around Africa. You know, I'm covering the whole Africa, that area. I am building my land over there. Where are you building your land? So there are web developers here. The money should remain within us. We should circulate the money. And so if you're here and you know you do web development, put yourself in the comment and say, I will design for you. You, the person that don't have a website, 
Go, I give you Holy Ghost discount by authority in the spirit. And go and get your website done. Do not only build on Red Ted Land. Number two, do your search engine optimization, s.e.o. It controls how you are seen when people Google you. Today, when you introduce yourself to anyone, they do not ask for your office. They do not ask many questions. Immediately you say, I do this and I do that. All they do is they go straight to what is called Google. Google has become the global authenticator of people's competencies. I repeat, Google has become the global authenticator of people's competencies. So once you have your own website, do your SEO. Lorna is saying that she does that. Um, you can go to her and she can help you with that. If it goes over Lorna, I have an agency, we do that. We can also help you as well. Get a website or go and learn it yourself using Waze or Squarespace or even WordPress to do it for yourself. You can take any of the routes. Number two, now utilize after search engine optimization, get your own emailing list. When I come on Sunday, I will walk you through some of the practicalities so that you understand how to do these things and they are not over your head. I will come with a step-to-step -step guide. I will share my screen and we'll go through everything together. But write these things down. So you will need an email list, right? Now, email list also become your own land because you own this list. You have access to it offline. You can always access your people and your clients. Number four, utilize already existing lands. So utilize your Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, um, TikTok, all of the platforms. I want to stand up for a bit. All of the platforms, if you can hear me say I. I. Great. I. Awesome. I. I. Great. Now, so all the platforms that you are able to go and get an existing audience and move them to your platform. You make sure that you get yourself on those platforms. Number four, thing that you will need if you're going to go online, say in your own um, self, say to yourself, I need a content strategy. The, the, you can type it in the chat if you want, but you need a content strategy. Content is the currency for online wealth creation let me repeat content is the currency for online wealth creation and if you don't believe me i'm going to ask a very simple question how many of us know gary vaynerchuk if you know him put an i in the comments or say gary how many of us know gary vaynerchuk how many of us know tony robbins How many of us know Grant Cardone? After you answer me, please tell me, how did you hear of these people? How did you hear of these people? And the answer is very simple. You saw their content. It might have been a one minute content. It might have been a 30 second content. You saw content from a platform. So guys, have I told you anything that is not true? You saw that they were on somebody's land and they had the currency that caught your attention. We use the currency called content to buy attention. On digital platforms, the more attention you have, the more you can create wealth. So you realize that any of the names that I have mentioned to you, when they bought your attention with their content, the next thing they try to do, Firebrand says sell or be sold, is they try to sell you something on their land so they can move you from the rented land, which is Instagram, to their own land, which is their program or their ebook or their mastermind. True or false? Let me know in the chat. So these are the things that you need to be able to go online. You need an internal strategy, which comprises of your, what you are bringing online, which is the knowledge or the expertise you have. It comprises of who you are bringing it to. If you're somebody who wants to help single mothers 
set up businesses online. There's a new buzzword called mompreneur. So if you're a single mother, your who are single mothers. Your who is not my who. My who are young people who can use technology. So I'm not necessarily targeting, maybe part of your single mothers might fall under young people who can use technology to create wealth. But we're not targeting the same people. And so our strategy will not be the same. And so you need to look at your internal strategy. Then once you have an internal strategy, you need to have your own land. Build your own website. Then you need to control how people discover you on your land. It's called search engine optimization. I'm trying to make this practical, right? Now, how people discover you and be able to come to your land is called search engine optimization. When I'm searched, how optimized am I in the engines that control discovery? That's a search engine optimization. Once you have SEO, you want to now go on existing lands like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube and use the currency called content to go and buy attention and say, guys, I also have some land here. I know that you like Facebook. I think you might also like my land, my, my uh, penthouse. My penthouse is very, very cool. So even though you are enjoying the, the suit here on Facebook, you can try my penthouse. So you now use content to buy attention and move them to your land. Once they land on your land, that is where wealth creation begins. And I wanted to make it very practical. I wanted to make it extremely understandable to everybody. And when we come on Sunday, I'm going to walk you through from A to Z in two hours with specific tools, all the secret um, hacks that we have as an industry for people like myself, who is a coach, who made close to um, $12,000 during Corona selling an ebook that I didn't print. I only spent $40 for my graphic designer to design a book cover for me. One PDF document. I reshared it to almost 800 people. And I made um, um, a little above $12,000 during Corona in the comfort of my home. How did I do it? How did I become the person I am for 800 people to want to buy from me? Um, how did I build my brand? I just got verified on Instagram and on Facebook. And I didn't even apply for it. I woke up in the morning. My brand had been ticked. How did I build it as an average young Ghanaian who left high school, not knowing exactly what he had to do, finding himself? finding that this is what I have and this is what I want to take online and how I built it to become what it is today. On Sunday, when we come back into this section, I will make sure you walk away from here with a 90-day strategy. And I'm going to follow through with the man of God and follow all of your accounts and look at what you are actually doing with the information. Because knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power and profit. I repeat as my last statement, and I'll take a sip of juice and wait for questions. Knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power and profit. God bless you, man of God. Wow, 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 wow. Guys, was that good or what? <laughs> Bob and Matt, you, you have taken us to another world. <laughs> I'm, I'm, now, now I'm thinking of how to digitize my prophetic, you know? It, it, how to it, brand it, myself. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was amazing. That was amazing, Kwame. Thank you so much. Kwame, there is um, a policy analyst and also one of the sharp brains on this platform, Stella Gara. I have also been following her, listening to her on many platforms and i'm sure um i task her to lead a discussion on on questioning so if anybody has any question as you type it at the comment section stella will, will lead the conversation we have um 18 more minutes to engage this great 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 chap on this platform so if you have a question just type it but stella just let us know what you also have thank you very much prophet i I don't think I'm going to attempt to add anything onto what uh, Kwame has already uh, said, uh, lest I trip on, on some of the very good information that he has provided. Kwame, I think you've done a really, really good job. 
and especially taking us to very many different places as far as uh, um, uh, the use of technology is concerned. And I saw many hands coming up during the, the, the presentation uh, of many people who wanted to ask questions and I'm going to give each one of them an opportunity to do so. Uh, but maybe to throw in uh, as partner in the works on the last presentation you, you, you made, you talked about uh, public speaking and, and putting yourself out there to speak. But then I, I am aware there are options for those people who are shy and may not be able to come onto the camera and, and you know, openly talk to people. Uh, so I think it would be useful to share to, to this audience what, they can, what options are available online that they can use and maybe give them examples of places they can go and see people who are out there, very popular, have a lot of followers, but have never shown their face okay. on their platform. All right, so we start from there. Thank you so much, Stella. Um, I love your earrings, by the way, with the, with the Afro chick. I, I love them. Okay. <laughs> now, man of God, it, it, I, I love the fact that she brought this question because I was going to make sure nobody is left out. Um, mm -hmm. I challenge everybody that I meet in trainings to see me but my Nigerians, you understand. For those who don't understand, I'll break it down. Man of God, who modest the F and who shyness F? Nigerians will say that. What it means, Stella, is that the modesty and the shyness doesn't pay bills. However, thanks to technology, there is, of course, always an option. So if you want examples, let me show you guys. If you've ever bought a course here, chances are the guy probably did an introduction and you probably saw him and did a conclusion you probably saw him but the rest of the course it was a presentation and you could hear his voice right some of them don't even show themselves at the introduction at all they just put their picture there and say i am uh, dominic from ghana and that's my picture welcome to the course and you never see them there are a lot of people who do um presentation of content through what we call voice over images or visuals and that's a very very strong option where it is your voice that is what we know but we also relate with you as a brand based on the content so for instance if i somebody as the future of forest trading so let's say if i wanted to create a brand as the go-to forest trading guy i will call myself i will make you uh, my, my handle will be at the forex millionaire that's my handle right as the forex millionaire if i'm shy and i don't ever want to show my face i will start introducing my content right from the beginning by using voice over images, or voice over visual. And that would be the question. I will try to get some links to the man of God so that he shares with you some very amazing YouTubers who make millions, some courses that I have bought that we never saw the trainer. We only saw his voice and we saw the presentation and let you guys see how that works. And it's quite simple. It's just hiding behind the camera. That's all it takes. Let me give you a good example. Watch, watch Stella. This is it. I'm still doing my presentation. Are you seeing me? No. So whether I'm reading on phone, at this time, I'm even throwing my hands in the air. You can't see. I could be wearing my boxer shorts. I could have no singlet on. All I need to do is present in the, the information. But if I've, able, if I've been able to prove to you already my value based on content you've already seen about me, you will not care whether you see my face or not because the value is not in the face-to-face -face connection. The value is in the utility of the content. So that is the answer to that question. The, the next question I'll probably ask has got to do with the uh, cyber security and uh, some data just popped up on my, my phone while you were presenting that uh, cyber attacks and, and data fraud has increased by about 50.1% right yeah. now. Yeah. So yeah. businesses need to be extremely, extremely worried about cyber attacks and, and, yeah. and, and data fraud. And especially because now data is the new gold and, and yeah. you know, many people are, are, are taking advantage of the fact that everybody is online yeah. and the new you know, business spaces. What, what kind of advice would you offer in that? And possibly just to, to, to uh, remind you to consistently mention the dangers. As you mentioned the opportunity, mention yeah. the dangers that come with it. Absolutely. Now, um, technology, you know, and thank you, please. This is one of my major expertise. So you've given me the opportunity to flex my muscle a bit. Um, so thank you, Stella. Now, cybersecurity, technology itself is agnostic in nature. What I mean is that it is neither evil nor is, is good. Technology is like fire. The same fire that when controlled,
can boil your food and you can enjoy it and it's just sumptuous and just mm. it's the same fire that can rage out of control and burn down your house all right so for everything that presents an opportunity there is always attached a danger it is the universal principle where children of the kingdom whenever there is a king there needs to be a yang the deep, the difference is in taking advantage of the yin and negating as much as possible or mitigating as much as possible the risk and the threat that comes with technology. So yes, technology has a whooping um, world of danger that comes with it. In fact, it would even scare you to the point that if you think about it, you might decide you want to go back to analog, okay? Now, why am I saying this, Stella? Do you know that it is only 16% of searchable content on the internet that you see on Google. The 84% is in the dark and deep web, which are not the access to standardized browsers. So there's a lot of dangers um, 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 comes with it. Now, when they started creating computers, first, for some of you, the best understanding I can give to you about cybersecurity is the introduction of viruses. So now everybody started buying an anti-virus or an anti virus so that you can fight these things so we also have a very robust cybersecurity industry which is the same way scientists and doctors are always looking for you know and um, vaccines for viruses these guys are also looking for vaccines for these online threats now let me help you guys with a rule of thumb do you know also stella that of the 50.1 percent you're speaking about over 99% of that threat comes from something called social engineering. The number of phishing attacks, and by the way, so that we don't get overly technical and get over your head, phishing attacks are when people send you emails trying to fool you so that you believe that it's coming from a legitimate source, but it really isn't, and they are able to use that to access your system or steal data or information or sometimes even directly take your money. So some of you have received the funny ones and the baby ones, like I have some money sitting in a bank account and I cannot leave the country. And if you help me come to your country, those are just joker ones. But there are ones that you can see somebody has mimicked and copied the domain of your bank. And they have sent you an email that looks exactly like the one your bank is using. And sometimes they're telling you to update your security or change your password so that your bank can protect you. But you go and click and you realize you're gone. Now they brought it on Instagram. I'm sure every one of you here might have encountered some plus 919 number, send you an information saying you violated Instagram laws and copyright laws. So click here to be able to um, retain that. Or somebody using your digital identity on social media to market their own product. Some people are stealing images of women, using them on dating sites to do romance scam. All of those things, one that stands out extremely strong is social engineering. What is social engineering, Stella? And we did a test in Nigeria, man of God. It will blow your mind. All we needed was a camera and a, a very nice lady dressed very well like a news person. And we hit the streets of Lagos. We did this in collaboration with a partner company. And we went out there saying that we're going to get people's ATM codes, man of God. It will shock you to know all they did was say that they are giving bonuses out for you to be able to get extra credit on your bank statement so that your bank statement of um, your money in your account would increase. But first, you need to answer two questions. Number one, do you have a, um, an ATM card? And number two, to prove that you have an ATM card, let us know your code. Stella, over 28 people were giving it out. Some of you, you saw a link in your email, click to download the latest Game of Thrones. You click, bam, it tells you redirecting. Then you landed on some website. So social engineering is one of the biggest cyber threats. All I'm going to say to you is this, and I'm going to say two things. Number one, if it sounds too good to be true, Oga, run, it might be a scam. It might be a cyber threat. Run away from it. Number two, if you didn't authorize it, if you didn't ask for it, and it is presented to you on a silver platter, no click on. Say, I no go for Mugu. Write them in the chat. I no go for Mugu. That's a, a, a Nigerian term. I will not fall Mugu. 
okay? And it's just social engineering. If you see the link, it is not familiar, do not click. If it is saying that those of you who go on torrent sites, you have already sold all your passwords and credit information. Anytime you try to steal something from the internet, know that the internet has already stolen from you. Because anytime you see free on the internet, you are the product. They are buying you for free. All right? So understand these things. Those of you who never want to pay for anything, instead of you to pay for Apple Music subscription, you've gone to download this younger app and you can download anybody's music for free. And now you see the ads popping up. You are wondering why your phone has slowed down. It is not demo, so it is that free thing you are getting. All right? So the social engineering is so, so powerful and you need to watch out when it comes to those things. But cybersecurity in and of itself is a topic I can treat for about six weeks. How you can make your WhatsApp hack proof, how you can make sure they don't hack your Instagrams, who is reading your messages, who is spying on your emails. There are short codes. Tomorrow I'll share some of them with you. You can check whether your phone has been hacked, your WhatsApp has been hacked. Man of God, I'll give that as an extra dose. 20 minutes caught becoming unhackable. I no go for Mugu. First of all, I didn't even realize this thing is called romance uh, scam. scam. Yeah. I'm learning new things. I have been a victim of romance scam for a very long time. Are you joking? Yes, they assume, not, not necessarily fallen victim, but they assume that I would be attracted to, to white ah. men. Therefore, they constantly use proper people of white yeah. men. It's not romance, romance. Ah. I'm going to request the, the, the rest of the participants to, to you know, pop up their questions. If you can write it on the chat, it would be great. If you really must ask the question yourself, please proceed to, 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 to raise up your hand digitally, and then I'll, I'll select you to speak. But as we are waiting for you to type your question, call me the next maybe issue I would like you to speak about is the state of mind of, of that people should adapt as they are, the state of mind that, 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 that most of us should adapt during this pandemic period in order to be able to succeed with, with technology and in order to be able to, to succeed under the new kind of, of situation we find ourselves in. When I speak to young people, I normally tell them that we have a, a very huge advantage over the older generation when it comes yes, to technology. Yes, yes. And, and some of them come in with an attitude that they're going to sell you know, their hips and their waist. And some of them come with an attitude that they're going to market other products and people are benefiting differently. What kind of state of mind do we need to have as we proceed into you know, this uh, technological spaces? I, I think that, can, can I sip a little water please? Yes, by all means. And take as much as you need to be able to respond to that question effectively. Awesome. So I think that, the, the, for me, the foundation of some very important, Stella, I think that the first thing is we need to recognize the internet as not a consumable product, but as a wealth creation tool. There are two different mindsets for it. Let me repeat that again. We need to start recognizing the internet not as a consumable product, but as a wealth creation and an economic empowerment tool. That's number one. Number two, we need to move away from the scarce mentality. And this is a third world problem. Whenever the African thinks about the internet, they think about it in terms of a resource that is finite. So they are worried that people who are on this call today, some of them in the back of their mind now, they are worried if their two gig is left or if it's only 50 MB that is left. So we are always worried about how finite the internet is. For those of you who've lived abroad or even in certain developed countries in parts of Africa, the internet is a basic necessity that doesn't run out. If you tell a US citizen that your bundle is finished, they will look at you like, wait, what are you talking about? So there is a certain mindset they have where the internet is an infinite resource. Whereas in Africa, the internet is a finite resource because we're thinking about it in terms of how easy it can go. So the second mind shift that we need to is to start understanding that the internet is a platform that allows me to create wealth. And if it does allow me to create wealth and I cannot look at it as a finite resource, I need to look at it from a point of abundance and look at the best options I have. The third thing that I think is the strongest um, mindset shift we need especially for the church, is this. Technology is not for an elite few. Technology is not for the nerds. And technology is not, guys, when you think about technologists, do not think about some weird guy with glasses that looks like twice the size of my president 
who's wearing some creepy bustle shorts and just typing, coding, and just numbers are appearing on the screen. Matrix and all these movies you've been watching has been gingering your head. That is not what you need to be a technologist. People like Steve Jobs and, and um, um, Max, I don't remember, I don't think Max Zuckerberg has sat to code probably in the last five years, right? So when you think about embracing technology, do not think that you need to have a certain disposition. People say, I'm not techie. It's for those people. It's for the nerds. It's too complicated. It is only complicated because your mind says so. The final thing I want to say about mindset is this. If it can create economic gains, it is worth the investment of acquiring the knowledge on how it works. This is the problem, especially with the church. We are so used to uh, freely it was given, so freely give. Don't bring that nonsense to the marketplace. Who? Don't bring them. Tell them, no? tell them, tell them. <laughs> Um, uh, Kwame, Dangote, uh, let's call him the number one businessman in the con continent, uh, in an interview with the Mohammed Amin Foundation, mentioned that the fastest and, and, and most thriving sectors in the near future were going to be ICT, agriculture, and infrastructure. Um, I have watched during this COVID period as people continued eating irrespective of how much social distancing they were practicing. They continued looking for food and, and people had to even move their businesses into delivery services in order to tap into you know, the, the opportunities. Uh, would, you, would you be able to speak to some of the opportunities that exist at a macro level for agriculture and infrastructure at a, on a, from a technology perspective and some of the opportunities that exist at a micro level for small businesses within this platform to be able to take advantage of. Those who have big money and big business who can take advantage of the macro, where do they go? And those who have small businesses, what can they tap into to glean onto whatever is coming off the table of agriculture? Let's of the big ones, all right? If you're a big business, you need to start focusing on three key things. Number one, I need you to focus on data and analysis. If you're a big company and you have the budget, invest in data collection, data processing, and data analysis. Because now more than ever, we have so much information to dig. People are just volunteering information about their purchasing, um, purchasing behavior um, and economic proclivities, and people are just giving out information. So you want to make sure as a big company you're putting into that. Number two, you might want to look at remote workforces. It is no more necessarily um, important for you to congregate 100 people in a building with the air conditions on. And so you might as well start investing in remote working technologies and platforms that allows people to come in and deliver value as and when you need them. If the graphic designer is designing 10 flyers a month, why is he sitting in the office for 30 days and burning out your air condition? So if you have the investment, invest in remote working um, if you're a macro company. The final thing I'll say to you to do is set out an independent and stealth research and development department. Innovation, leave them alone. Do you know that Google company has an R&D section called Alphabet, and that is where they are building all their next generation solutions and products. So if you think that Google is going to die, they have a leash on us. They've built projects waiting for us 10, 20 years ahead because of the amount of data involved. So it would be great for you to bring in a technologist, an innovation consultant like myself, an artist, a child, somebody in their mid-ages, somebody in the older generation, form what you call, for most companies, I tell them, call it your innovation SWAT team. Right, So these people are basically researching new technologies, new breakthroughs, new industries, and advising you to say to you, please, something like a think tank, which is independent. If they come up with an idea, give them the funding to do experimentation of the innovation. If this was not possible, we would not be seeing companies like Akia which is a wood company, branch into the other side, which is agriculture, and now they are into vertical farming. And because they already had a good understanding of the supply chain delivery and everything, and they were good with wood. So when you needed to set up a vertical farm, they already had a great understanding of how to set up the structures. Now they are dominating in food, but IKEA is a furniture company. 
So you want to make sure you set up this innovation think tank for the micros. And this is where the work really begins because we don't have big budget spending. Some of these technologies will be, might be over our head. So the ones I want you to consolidate your efforts on, number one, invest in your own land. Have a very good website that's user friendly, that is um, mobile friendly, mobile in, in, interactive. Everybody would go. If you're a restaurant today and if I Google your name, your phone number does not pop up on the first page for me to call you. You're not in business. So focus on getting your own website and getting a very good search engine optimization. Make it as interactive as possible. Invest in a blog. These are practical things, guys. Get a blog that allows you to bring new ideas and new thoughts and new innovative ideas that you're doing within your company so people are able to grow with you and get information. The next thing that you can do as a micro business, utilize social media marketing. What $100 can do on Facebook for you in terms of reach? If you take it to a radio station, they won't play your ad because they can't even cover one day of ads, okay? So utilize social media platforms for marketing. Use email marketing. Use SMS marketing. It's not dead yet. People still love it when their favorite businesses send them a birthday message on their birthday. Because at a micro level, you're trying to build strength. Invest in a great customer relationship management software. These things are not too expensive. How are you able to store the information and the data of your customers so that you are able to continuously reach them? So a CRM software or program will be great for a micro level. And the most important thing, imbibe the idea of innovation and technology into your staff. Make sure that your guys are open to new technologies. They know what's happening in your industry. What's the other online restaurant doing? What's the other HR um, guys doing online? Be aware, make sure your culture is inclusive, is digital, and is innovative. If you are the boss that walks into the office and everybody is scared to speak, poverty is your extreme destination. You will not escape it. Because what would happen is innovative ideas will silently die in them or will be pushed by other systems that allows for innovative thinking. And that's what I think about on the macro level and also on the micro level. Thank you very much for responding to that very comprehensively. Babalua, you had a question? Babalua. Babalua, you had a question? No, 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 it, it, no, it, I, it was, I error. no, I didn't know there was question. It's been covered? Yes. Oh, great. I don't see any hands uh, here, but I, I, let me just continue to analyze the questions on, on the chat. Someone asked about the future of Forex trading. Kwame, there was a time when, when Forex was the preserve of, of government and its delegates. Now people can trade on their phones. What yeah. what the future pretending for Forex trading? Interestingly, Prophet, I said to you when I come on your system, on your, your, your um, summit, I will not speak of things that I've not tried. Stella, it will interest you to know that after ignoring it for months, this very day as I speak to you, let me see if I can show you proof so that you know that I'm not making this up for, just for the sake of making it up. Hold on. One second. Okay. You might not see it as clear as possible, but you can see that they are giving me a congratulatory message. I literally signed up for a Forex um, um, system where I'm going to learn how to trade and maybe even double in the networking side of recruiting people. So what I, I can see is that... To there as well. Come again. I did so today as well. Are you joking? It's you really didn't understand me now. Well, what is all this now? <laughs> <laughs> so I am I'm not going to be able to speak to it. I've just jumped in, which is what we should all do. Test out new waters, guys. The the unknown um, territories are mostly the ones that rewards the most. Because man of God, if you and I discover a land that nobody has discovered and there's gold there, guess what? We don't blow. If there's no gold, let's go on discovering land, all right? So I've dug in, I'm going to test the industry out, I'm gonna learn how to trade, I'm gonna trade, and maybe two or three months, if by the grace of God, the man of God brings me up or back, I'll be able to speak to the future of Forex. I have just jumped into the water. Okay. Before I hand, I hand over back to the prophet, um, when you have a platform and an opportunity to speak, uh, your, your right to speak actually ends where your responsibilities begin. 
and there are very many legal issues that surround what we say online, especially for those of us who are in, in, in governance. You know, you, you, you do not just approach the conversation by attacking whoever you want to attack and calling them and be very careful about what kind of content we give and how we present it. What cautions would you give to the Dif I mean, the different groupings you've seen here, the kinds of careers that people have here, what question do you give them in terms of the information they share? Do they need to invest in a full-time lawyer or there are uh, platforms that they can get information to just guide them on what to say and what not to say? Okay, so first of all, I think that um, a little piece of research can give you a very strong guide as to what's not allowed. But I can say to you guys, a lot of the things that are not allowed offline are also not allowed online. In fact, the internet has given rise to what we call keyboard mafias. And, 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 you know, Kung Fu fighters who just understand key part. Everybody is a gangster behind the screen. People who cannot stand in your face and even look up and speak can go on Twitter and go and shout you out in a very uncompromising, you know. And, and people need to understand that these things, number one, let me just give you a rule of thumb. There is no such thing as delete on digital. So if you have any intention of deleting, don't do it in the first place. Do not create if you intend to delete, because once it is digitally entered into the system, there is no delete. Man of God, I requested for my Facebook um, data the last time that I was doing my cleanup for my cybersecurity, Stella. I got back 68 gigabyte worth of data on me since I joined Facebook in 2009. Man of God, in, when I requested for Google, even the searches that I did that I did not type enter, there's a history of it. So the internet never forgets, all right? So that's number one. Number two, if it's not allowed offline, guys, it is not allowed online. Don't let keyboard gangsterism fool you. Don't troll people. Don't tarnish their image. If somebody picks it up, it can be a big problem for you. But like Stella is saying, there's a lot of information online. Um, there are a lot of lawyers who don't even understand internet governance because internet governance as an industry is very nascent in and of itself because we're now beginning to understand industries and technologies. A very good one that became a big problem, for instance, Stella, because you're a policy person just running by you for you to think about. If a self-driving car gets into an accident, is it the builder of the car? Is it the person that bought it? Is it the software? Where, where is, you know, the probability cost going to come from in terms of law? So legal is already struggling with being able to deal with some of these things. So you might not necessarily need a lawyer. If you ever get into trouble, may you never get into trouble uh, in Jesus' name. But if you ever do, you might need a lawyer. But for now, a lot of the things that are unlawful offline are also unlawful online. I am more concerned, however, about how much of your own data and your own privacy that you are clicking agree with terms and conditions without reading and giving those things away. I will say to you, be extra careful, be more careful. If you can, guys, it will come and bite you. Some people, you know the best um, excuse people give is, but I have nothing to hide. I'm like, guy, calm down. This your, you don't understand life. Today you're speaking like this because of where you are. Tomorrow, it is now Kevin Hart after 10 years that they are bringing a joke he told 10 years ago and calling him um, a homophobic, you know, human hater. Something he said 10 years ago. So please, if you have any intention of deleting, do not create in the first place. Wow. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Perfect. I, 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 I'm about to hand this back to you, but if you'll allow me, there's one more question that has just been typed by Daniel Nanga on the chat. Uh, he's talking, ask, requesting you to comment. First of all, he says, big up, teacher is Kwame. He's enlightened and is requesting you to comment about cryptocurrency because you mentioned it at, at the onset. I had an opportunity to, to uh, access cryptocurrencies. They were sold to me by an Indian in Malawi. And because he was Indian, I decided I could never buy anything from an Indian. I wish I had not allowed that to stand in the way. What is the future of cryptocurrency? Again, what should you be cautious about and, 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 and those who are interested, you know, what steps should they take? All right, cryptocurrencies, this is my guide, all right? Just like I said about Forex, okay? Dive in, first of all, go and learn about it. The beauty of cryptocurrency is not the currencies that are being created, is that underlining technology called the blockchain technology, okay? So blockchain technology is going to create what we call smart contracts. Now, banks are the ones holding the place 
as intermediaries and authenticators of transactions. So if I send money to person A, it passes through a bank that will take a record of the ledger of the transaction and then it sends you to person B. What cryptocurrency is doing is decentralizing the system so that all of us within the network are the ones who authenticate the transaction. And it's a very interesting concept if you try and explain it, um, you know, in a technical way. But what I know is that, number one, the world is moving towards a cashless society. Once we are moving towards a cashless, paperless society, we're going to see digital money. Cryptocurrency presents itself as one of the strongest options for transactional exchange in the very near future. As we speak now, if you visit eight out of 10 websites, you might get the option of Bitcoin alongside credit card payment or PayPal, all right? So if you're looking at understanding it fully, first understand the blockchain technology by doing your research and reading about it. There are people who do blockchain for beginners, blockchain for dummies. There are very simple ways you can understand. In terms of the currency, I will not point you towards currency A or currency B. I missed out on Bitcoin. I invested a bit and made a little bit of something from there. In those days when I was really involved, there were a lot of coins that were growing and scaling at one point or not. So it would be good for you to get the base knowledge, understand blockchain, then you can understand cryptocurrencies and you can know where it's going. The reason why I know it will be here is number one, Facebook is about to launch their own cryptocurrency that will allow you to do ads and buy on Facebook. Uber is about to launch their own cryptocurrency. By next year, next two years, when you sit in the car, you wouldn't need to pay cash or credit card. You'll be paying with the token of Uber or you'll be paying with the token of Facebook. And what backs the economic framework of the blockchain technology would be the main thing that we need to understand so we can determine which type of cryptocurrency path we would choose in terms of investments or, you know, research. So that would be my answer to that. Kwame, the place of cons consistency and legitimacy in content creation. Uh, there are very many uh, uh, examiners online. And if you present the wrong nutrition information and you're telling people they'll lose weight, there'll be someone who will point out yeah. that the product you're, you're recommending is going to hurt people in one way or the other. Yeah. If you present medical information and it's not accurate, someone is going to point out. Yeah. So uh, you did talk about research, but, but basically the place, the place of making sure that your information is correct but yeah. also the place of verifying if you're doing anti-corruption exposes of, of, of government officials, how, how, how does the legitimacy of information affect your influence and affect how much people value information or not? Okay. Uh, and, and then as you comment on that, also talk about consistency, the frequency of posting information, the frequency of being available to your audience and how it actually helps to build your influence. Awesome. So I love this question so much. Um, number one, let me talk about um, the legitimacy of your content, all right? Um, with information overload comes fake news or fake information, right? Um, because everybody now has the democratic right to contribute information into a world port. All sorts of information are available. And what is happening is that a lot of people are creating non-existent truths, some under the guise of propaganda, some do it just for fun, just to do distort history and distort facts. But I, I'm glad, like when we spoke about the threats in the cyberspace, right? Whenever there's a yin, there'll be a yang. So as much as these people are doing all of these things, now as we speak, for instance, it's come as close as when the president of the United States speaks, Twitter is able to fact check him and write under it, the information here has been declared false, okay? So there are a lot of tools that can help you verify now, I just installed a few Google Chrome extensions in my browser that allows me to, before I visit a website, give me either a green, red, or brown button on top of the website. If it's green, it means that 97% um, and above, this website provides credible information. If it is brown, I think it's 50% and above. And if it's a dark spot on the website, it means this is a website where most of their information are misleading. So I would also do a little bit of research and give you some of these tools that would then allow you to be able to ascertain where information is coming from. Sometimes it's great to get some good information from Wikipedia, from established sources can be great. There are scholarly um, sources where most of the information comes from educationally verified, you know, sources that you can use as well. 
So there are tools there that you can use to balance yourself. And if you're an expert in the industry, you own it to yourself to when you found a piece of information, cross-check it against other experts, cross-check it against other information sources to know whether there's a discrepancy. Sometimes, Stella, it's not even that the information is false, it's that there has been an update on the information since the last time you received it, right? And you just don't know. And somebody will come out of nowhere and lash you and call you all sorts of names. So do yourself that favor. An expert means that you know your work and you know your work. Now, with consistency, <laughs> I don't even need to make it um, technological. Um, there is, there is a, a proverb in my language that uh, translates to, uh, when this is a, a, a literal translation, it says that if you literally piss at one point for a long time, it would foam up, okay? Um, and this is, this is the very um, um, strength of water. The strength of water is that water is consistent. If it starts beating against a, a, a piece of stone, no matter how hard the stone is, give the water three, four months, it will penetrate. You're not seeing water come out of that stone. That's the power of consistency. By, by the way, consistency says that I am confident of my product. It says that I am here to stay. It says that you need me in order for you to get where you're going. It says that I have a strong belief in my value proposition because if you go and you don't come and then sometimes you go and then they come, it is your way of announcing to the world, I'm not too sure of myself, I'm just flaky, I'm just going and coming. And that spirit, I think there's a special demon that they have assigned for digital content creation. You wake up, you put the computer in front of you, immediately you want to record something, you say, ah, well, this is what I'm about to say, this is not... I say it is a special digital demo that they have installed in your house and I set you free. <laughs> okay. So it is so, so hard. Guys, I'm a content creator. I know I make my notes. I research. Then I sit in front of the video and I have or should I record tomorrow? Tomorrow will never come. All right. You owe it to yourself. I did a video and I say that I do not think that people have a problem with consistency. Why? Because almost 99% of us brush our teeth every single day. So within you is the capacity to be totally consistent. The reason why we do brushing of teeth, Stella, is because number one, if you don't brush your teeth, you will get an immediate feedback from your mouth. Your mouth will tell your guy, this thing that is coming out of are here. It is full of power and it is full of light. You won't need anybody to tell you. You will get an alert and notification in your system, right? Number two, immediately you brush your teeth. You also get immediate feedback from your body because you're feeling good. Your smile is great. Do you know that when you wake up and you've not brushed, you have a very uh, uh, mumusious face? You, you're just, you're not awake, right? But immediately you brush. It opens not just your mouth, it opens your face up. And all of a sudden, you're really awake, right? And so all we need to figure out is what is the internal motivation that is going to let me consider this content journey as a necessity? Because anything the body sees as a necessity, go to the hospital. Some people, you know how you give them drink, right? In your house, Stella, and they will say, I don't like bitter things. Take them to the hospital when they have four days to leave. And the doctor said, drink this one, you won't die. See, the bitter will be so sweet. You will see them licking their lips. It is not that it was bitter. It is that the internal motivation was not there, all right? So once you can generate a strong internal motivation, this is my gift. This is my skill. I'm taking it to the world. I'm going to provide value after which they will exchange value. This is me expressing myself in the footprints of time. If your why is strong enough, the how is almost always easy, right? So that is what I need. I think people need the internal motivation to say this content journey is important to what I want to do. And so I will commit to making sure I do it. That might be the key that unlocks consistency. Thank you very much, Kwame, for such, insight, uh, such an insightful presentation and for you know, opening our eyes to a lot of the opportunities that are available. I am excited and I'm sure the rest of the, of the, the of the members in this conversation are extremely excited about the fact that we still have some more to hear from you. Um, God bless you so much for, for actually sharing the gems you have and all the gold that you have been storing for yourself and the treasures with, with the rest of us. 
indeed uh, it is true how how beautiful are the feet of he who comes with good tidings may the holy spirit inspire you with more information so that the next time you're speaking to us you speak to our spirits and enable us to manifest for our lives perfect thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to host this conversation i happened to have seen the image of, of Kwame Opoku on the poster and I kept on saying I've seen this face somewhere but I could not remember where. I tried to think of the conferences I've attended and then I heard his voice today and immediately I identified the fact that I've had him on Instagram before speaking about, about uh, matters of investment. So I, I am so honored to have hosted this conversation. I'm hoping I did not let you down and I'm hoping I have carried the anointing that you have consistently released the point to be able to so ask some of the most amazing questions. Thank you for allowing me to pour out. That's a special grace, by the way. Excellent. Uh, and, uh, wow. Back to you, Prophet. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Wow, guys. Such an overwhelming moment. I mean, God bless you so much. But I, I am. Guys, how many of you would want to read the book he wrote during the lockdown? Pyjamas millionaire how many of you would love to have that because we, we are going to be having kwame for another day that is sunday but you and i know that the the kind of knowledge he has and the depth of his exposure about these things cannot be exhausted with within two days all right and so i'm sure that when he gets the book to us it will come in handy and they will be able to get a lot um kwame so you would Probably delve deep into into your book on Sunday. On and Sunday, then, yes. yes. So that at oh, least we can. There, also... there is something that just occurred to me. I don't know how many people are on this call, and I am not the type of person who wants to prove other man to prompt him. Hmm. And so I'm going to ask for your permission. Now, hmm. last weekend I conveyed a three-day summit called the University yes. of Personal Development. The University of Personal Development brought six speakers, including um, Africa's um, highest and most sought-after speaker, Wuzi Tembawayo. Um, Steve Harris is from Nigeria, John Obidi is from Nigeria. We touched on everything from hacking your self-confidence, overcoming self-doubt and self-sabotage, how to create money, um, create wealth online, which was something that I thought, you know, walking your path, walking your journey, finding the gold, leadership, and every single one of them that um, came on did an amazing thing. Now, the three-day conference is done, and I have been giving out the replay, and we're selling that online. And then there's the Pijama Pajamas ebook that goes one lockdown. That takes you on a step-to-step -step guide on how you can start as a beginner and learn how to make well, um, the prompting I have is to put these two things together and bring it to you as a gift. And anybody who believes in the mantle and in the grace that is upon your head, that wants to tap into that grace and the knowledge we are presenting and the pragmatism mm -hmm. of it, once I hand it over to you, and I'm doing that now, I'm giving access to you for that, anybody here that wants to raise a certain seed, can pay that to your ministry, and I will give them a copy of the book, and I will offer uh -huh. the entire replay of the When they sow a seed to your ministry, they can have it, and they can use it, and they can benefit from it. That is what my spirit is telling me, and that is the gift I brought. Wow, 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 wow. wow. I don't know what to say, I'm speechless, but God bless you so much, Kwame. God bless you so much. For availing yourself and also I, I was amazed at you know I, I I looked through your page and I saw the conference and and when I saw the speakers I was I was just blown away um, that uh, they could come on board to be able to convey whatever it is that the Lord has put on your heart guys I want every one of you on this platform we are 41 today but I want every one of you on this platform to get the ebook and to get the the recording of not just for today but also for the conference he had i'm telling you you guys have noticed that this one is a wealth of knowledge 
all right? And we can't exhaust all that he has within this, this two days. And um, we, we were just blessed to have had him for today and for Sunday because almost every week he's, he's on, on another platform and he's up to something else and all that. And so what I think we should do is that we have to also be a blessing to him, all right? Um, I'm telling you, he does international speakings and, I mean, he's seen money. He's seen somebody who made $12,000 within a few 10 days or so during the lockdown. This guy has seen money. But this is what I believe in. And you know that that has always been my stand and position in these matters, that the less is always blessed of the greater. And I want us to also be a blessing to him. Now, this is what I want. I'm asking every one of you on this platform to do. Um, I know he sells his ebook, and I know the amount he sells it is very, very pricey because of the information that is in. And also, for us to also have access to the three day conference that he had is also something very powerful. Every one of you on this platform should look for $50, just $50. Um, so that as, as he blesses us with those books and uh, the conference materials and everything, we would intend also bless him because I believe that it is not just the knowledge that he has poured us that would impact us, but also what we're able to put a seed on his life. Because this is not, just, you know, this is not a, this is not a conventional motivational speaker who will say, um, I was working and I saw somebody selling beans and I had Gary and then within six months I was a million. No, this one has taken us, you know, and he was interspersing his presentations with scripture. So this one has a root in the word of God, a root in the grace of God. And people, I have followed him keenly and I've seen his evolution. And I'm telling you that this one is a global brand. And I want us to also be a blessing to him. This is what you are going to do. Those of you in Kenya, get your fifty dollars across to um, to Kate Karaoke on the Kenya line. Um, those of you in South Africa, you also know what to do. You can contact your learning. Those of you from Canada, Vivian is on. Maybe Morrison is also from UK and all that. And those of you in Ghana, you know the Ghana number that you can do that. Um, get the book. That is the most important thing. Get the book. And listen, let me say this. The book and the conference materials will not be given to anybody who doesn't sow this seed. I don't want to treat, I don't want us to treat the knowledge with this. You know, Africans have this mentality where we want everything cheap, 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 cheap. All right. This one has built himself over time. He's bought materials, he's schooled himself, he's invested himself. And I want us to be a blessing to him so that the grace on his life will rub on us. How many of you understand what I'm saying? How many of you understand what I'm saying? Good, good. And in the next two minutes, I just want you to type something, at least before he leaves, I'll just type something, a feedback for him to know that he's been a blessing to you. Yes, as I said, he's totally understand. Let me know if you were blessed, if you were imparted, if you learned something new. I'm telling you, I'm, do, I'm so speechless. I'm telling you, this one is seriously anointed in the area of his influence. And just let him know whilst he's still available to read your comments. Let him know. Mephia, that was what? Is it fire? Okay, I hope this one is not the fire from uh, Lebanon. <laughs> okay, all right. God bless you. All right, Beatrice Joseph says, I'm greatly challenged in a positive way. Babalwa says, very informative. Mephia says, mind blown. Awesome. Mephia is also joining us. Kwame, Mephia joining us from Kigali. You know wow. what Mephia does in Kigali? Mephia cooks Ghanaian delicacies in Kigali. <laughs> and she's causing waves over there. <laughs> Somebody right. said as he spoke. This is powerful. Man of God, read the last comment. As, as he spoke, I got, wow, I got a business idea which I'll pray about. You don't need to pray about anything. Go and you go, go to the marketplace and launch. And launch out. That's for a strategy. I'll, see, this person, man of God, I'll give them a 30-minute free consultation to help them set their business up because of you. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow. So, Mercy, just, just try and connect. Just try and connect. Um, he is also a personal coach, a lifestyle coach, so he'll coach you into that business that God has put on your heart. God bless you so much, Kwame. 
God bless you so much. Pastor says his eye opener, Carol says that was so insightful. Mercy again says, Wow, thank you. I'll connect. But buy the book, get your $50. Go look for seed, $50. Get the book and get the training material to help you. That is powerful. God bless you. All right, man of God, let me release you so that you can at least take some rest and then um, recuperate and all that for Sunday. Sunday. Yes. We'll do an anointing service. I'm ah, we'll you. do an anointing <laughs> service. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You are such thank a you so much for having me, man of God. I'll see you on Sunday, guys. God bless you. God bless you. Wow, guys. Ish, 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 ish. God bless you so much. Wow. All right. So let me release you. We exceeded our time, but I believe it was worth it, right? Yeah. Kathy, yeah. Did, you, did you record the session? Just come every Thursday to just come for me to say I see this. I'm tired of seeing witches and wizards in your family. Please. I'm so tired of seeing witches and wizards breaking ancestor cares and all that. One of these days, you should call me so that we do a virtual dedication of your new business. All right? That is what, that is the vision God gave us. That is why we call it Global Prophetic Network. All right? I want you to be a champion in your field. And listen, don't just listen. Don't just listen to these things. Dare to implement them. Dare to launch out. And I'm telling you that you will be blessed. The Lord bless you. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we honor you so much for this powerful engagement and conversation. We adore you for using your mouthpiece to redirect our thinking and to reshaping our perception about what the world holds for us. Holy Spirit, I pray that you shall guide us into these blissful realities and cause us, Father, to explore dimensions of wealth even in these last days. Thank you, Holy Father, in Jesus' precious name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Listen, let me just say this again. Let me say this again. This is not a solicitation. This is not like an option. This is a charge for everyone on this platform. Look for that seed. I really want us to bless him. Okay? I really want us to bless him. He sells his book for, is it 10 or 15, $15 or something? Um, but I want us to bless him so much so that at the end of the day, the grace on his life will come back to us, okay? Don't waste your $50 on chapati and numatoma and those things. Get it, all right? And let's, let's bless him so that he can give us those materials. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Stella, you are amazing today. And we are doing it again on Sunday. God bless you guys. The only thing that I wasn't very pleased about was that you guys didn't ask questions. We, we left the questions only for uh, Stella to ask. So get yourselves ready, prepare questions, practical questions. How would you be able to explore dimensions of wealth in the area of your influence? Ask those questions. I'm sick and tired of this, your small income. It reflects on your type. Okay. <laughs> so... Ask those questions, practical questions, so that you'll be able to guide us into all that. The Lord bless you. Love you so much. And love I'll you too. On Sunday. Love Ciao. you too, Bye. Prophet. Bye. God bless you. Bye. Okay.